So tonight, we continue our discussion on the struggles in prayer. So far, we have spoken about the face of Christ, how he bridges the gap between his holiness and our sinfulness. We spoke about the cross of Christ, how he poured himself out in order to fill us up. We spoke about the language of Christ, how he is always speaking to us, and we must become fluent in the language of silence once again. Tonight, we will look at the heart of Christ, because this is where the face of Christ, the cross of Christ, and the silence of Christ leads us to his heart. The struggle of prayer is the wrestling of our attention, our focus, away from the selfishness of our pride and focusing it on him, his heart, his will. It is the result of our fallen human nature that our desires, our passions, our pride often eclipse God's will. Initially, Adam did not struggle with this. Initially, we see harmony in the garden as Adam fulfills each aspect of his divinely appointed vocation. He tills, he keeps, he even rests when God willed to put him into a deep sleep. And look at the fruit of that rest, our dear Mother Eve. Can we do that? Can we rest in prayer? Probably not. Our prayer likely falls somewhere between drowsy disinterest and occasional fits of anxiety. After the fall, it was like this too for Adam. He became a very different man. Long gone is the harmony which we first saw in the garden. Now we see a man who is hiding, arguing, blaming, covering up. He seems ready to flee. Perhaps the desire to flee was so strong that at first the exile was a welcome punishment. But then reality set in. He realized just how far he was from God's heart, from God's love. And this is where, but for God's grace, we find ourselves today in our prayer. The prophet Isaiah spoke of this when he said, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Like a married couple whose lives are sadly going in different directions, the consequences of the fall pull our hearts away from God's. The two lovers, us and God, with time, sadly grow apart. But God, who never gives up on us, who never stops loving us, who never stops speaking to us, sends us the word. He tells us in the book of Revelation, return to your first love. So ask yourself, what great passion is pulling you away from God? What great pride is keeping you from returning to your first love? Prayer is about reorienting your heart to God's heart. And that reorientation certainly takes place in prayer, but even more so, it takes place before prayer in our daily lives. It is in the footsteps of our daily lives in which we are transformed into images of Christ, reflections of Christ. Through the daily difficulties, our struggles, we have the opportunity to put the faith we proclaim into tangible practice. Theologians call this virtue. Prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance, faith, hope, charity, the virtues reorient our hearts to his. 
They reorder our out-of-control passions. The Christian who desires to grow in prayer will first grow in virtue. By this growth, we will reflect Christ, becoming more like him, having a heart like his, so that when we come to him in prayer, our hearts can join his heart in greater harmony. When you pray, ask God to guide you through the virtues, to give you the grace necessary to grow in virtue, so that your thoughts may become his thoughts, that your ways may become his ways. Pray with me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you very much.